I just wanted to show a quick essential part of my isopod and snake care. I'm going to get this recorded so people can use this tip. This is Winifred, and she is in her enclosure. Come here, Winnie. There's our Winifred. Winnie is a western hognose, and it's time for her enclosure to be cleaned. She uses the fibrous aspen that's nice to burrow in, and I also have a corner that has sphagnum moss. She has two heated spots, one next to her cave, which is this pink monster, and then some under some of the fibers that are on the other side of the cave. But she needs a cleaning because it's starting to stink like a snake. So we are putting the aspen and the sheds and all the snake waste into the isopods. So we've got some, some Dubrovnik, Kalugi, Armadillididium, also known as clowns. They're one of the type of clowns. There's a few morphs. I'm trying to keep all the plastic in and get all the other stuff out. So yeah, I just wet down one corner. There's some sheds in here. They love the sheds. And add the fiber to it. And we can do that for our... So these are the dairy cows. This is a popular one. And they're eating through the cork bark, but there's the colony before it's disturbed. Those are the dairy cows. And so we're just going to... I'm going to scoot all this stuff to one edge to kind of get under there. Their original mix had peat moss and cocoa fiber and quail eggs and charcoal and some more aspen and oak leaves. So that's my usual isopod mix, the a AGB. It's a, it's a kind of soil that's for botanical gardens that's been hijacked by the isopod community but so yeah so we just add it kind of thick on one end and scatter it around and that way we've got a nice fresh isopod culture this looked like this a couple about a month or two ago and as you can see uh, the cultures that I'm filling in that have been had this happen before don't have any left so the isopods love this so one that oh, there's an extra red runner one that hasn't been filled in you can see they have the quail eggs still at least the bigger pieces of it um, they're high in the isopods are high in calcium, which means they need to eat calcium. These are the granulated. Those are all a bunch of baby granulated because I'm trying to move them out of here. This is my hot shot bioactive shot. So this actually mostly has the dwarf isopods. I don't know if you see them running in there. Almost look like springtails. Those are really good for bioactive tanks. Um, I use this in my frog terrariums. The frogs seem to eat them up pretty quick, too. Yeah, so we'll just make that side open. Hi, Winifred. Grab ourselves a handful. Make sure we have enough for everybody. Get the... And then tuck it back in and put them over it and let them start eating it up. And do a little bit of moisture. And we've got happy ice pods. So that's my ice pod care regimen. Um, I'll also add some extra oak leaves. I have the ice pod diet from Rupashi. A few other things here. I'm trying to separate. These are the Magnificus. Big monster orange. These are pretty popular. Magnificus. And then these babies here, the Gestroy, that I'm trying to separate out. I had the Gestroy in with the Magnificus. And I'm seeing lots of baby Gestroy and no baby Magnificus. So I'm guessing... The giant oranges are getting outcompeted, so I gave the Gestroy that full enclosure and scooted these over to this to start trying to get my oranges to thrive. I've also been selling a lot, so I might not be seeing a lot because I've been selling them, but I need to put the Gestroy up for sale and take the oranges down. But there we go. Just a little bit of aspen in there with some snake shed and some snake extras, excras, excrements. This species, as well as the Hoffman's eggy, like a little drier, and so I change how I drill the holes in the preferring drier species compared to Armadillidium and stuff seem to like a uh, lower humid or a higher humidity, lower air movement. So you got these tinier holes that are up higher. Okay, well I'll get done with the rest of my isopod cleaning. Just wanted to show you the setup so that uh, you can do something extra with your extra snake bedding or reptile bedding. Anything that was already non-toxic for your reptile is going to be great for your isopods. Uh, avoid any cedars. Stick to aspens. Um, thanks for watching. Check out some of the other critters. And don't forget to 
please the algorithm, like, and subscribe.